Okay, um, good evening, everybody. I'm Lois Johnson, and I'm a member of the Niagara branch OGS. I think I'm just gonna wait just maybe another minute or so to see if anybody else wants to join us. So um, what I wanted to, it's not like a formal, it's not a formal webinar or anything. I'm just gonna do a, a little bit of a, an intro. Um, I'm just gonna briefly tell you a little bit about my genealogy background. I will go through some of the real basic stuff. Um, I do have some questions for you because I'd like to have a little bit of um, conversation at the end. Um, and you can you can put this in the chat if you if you wish. I'm just gonna ask you where you live, um, what families are you researching, are you new to genealogy? Um, those are the types of things. I'm just I just wanna we we just wanna get to know some of the people. So that's kind of um, what my plan is. So I'm just gonna wait another minute or so. I'm just gonna just see who's in the waiting room here. Lois, it's Steve. I'll uh, keep an eye on the waiting room for you. Oh, okay. And <laughs> Lois, so, would you prefer our my camera on or off? It doesn't matter to me. Um, I am going to turn mine off and I do, I do, I do want to say to the group, my internet where I live is not wonderful. Um, I am going to, um, I think it'll be fine, but it's better if I, for me, if I turn my video off, um, I'll turn mine off until asked otherwise. Okay. Okay. Yep, that's fine. So I'm going to shut my video off and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my um, genealogy history. I've been a member of the Niagara branch for I don't even know how many years now. I'm going to say um, maybe 10. I, I don't even remember when I joined. It's been a, it's been a while. Um, and before I actually got into genealogy, I really didn't know too. I didn't know an awful lot about my family. Um, my mother was really good at telling me things. She's got a little bit of <clears throat> German ancestry. So I kind of knew some of my um, I, I kind of knew that some of my um, ancestors did come from Germany, and I knew that I had, there was, a, um, her family grew up in, or was from Gainsborough in Niagara, and I, um, I kind of knew there was a road, a, a couple of roads named after my family, um, Crick Road and Vaughn Road are named after my family, so I was pretty excited about that. And then after I started doing my research, then I found out that I have a little town named after my family, and that's Beamsville. I am a descendant of Jacob Beam. So during my, um, my father was born in Alberta and my mother was born locally here in, well, in Salt Lake. And uh, after I started doing my research, I realized that um, I have an awful lot of history. I have an awful lot of my ancestors just came into the New England states. Um, this genealogy has taken me down to, not, per, not physically, uh, one of these days I might get there, has taken me down to Massachusetts and uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, um, and then uh, New York, an awful lot in New York State. And then if I, um, in the Midwest, out in Iowa, Ohio, uh, Missouri, South Dakota, um, and that's just some of them. And then, um, my great grandfather was born in Quebec, so I am I, I'm researching a lot across Canada, an, an awful lot in the U.S. and uh, a lot of my ancestors came from England. I haven't haven't actually got back and researched that far. That's just too far away for me. And I just realized I did not stop my video, which I'm going to do. So that's a little bit about my research. So what I wanted to just go over with you, I'm just I'm going to um, share my screen here. So just give me a second. Oh, we got somebody from New York. <clears throat> okay, you, you can see my screen. Yep. Okay. So 
with your membership to OGS. And again, I'm not sure if you're all members of OGS. Um, this was open to anybody. So I'm not sure if you're members of OGS. But with your membership, you get um, free access to the library edition of um, my heritage. So take advantage of it. Um, I have found a few really cool things in there. Another website that I use all the time is uh, Find My Past, and that one is free. So if you look up here, um, you'll have to create an account, which is, it's free, so you don't have to do anything. You just need, I think, your email address and a password or something. It's not a big deal to create the account, but I have, uh, I have found so much information on family search. So one of my ancestors is Jacob Vaughn. So I did a search on Jacob Vaughn. And what I have here, I found this record. Um, he was born in New Jersey in 1796. This link over here um, tells me that he's an, attached in a tree on family search. And it won't be my tree because I don't have a tree on family search. This is the original image. And this is the um, record details. Now, whenever I can, I always try to look at the original image. And if I look at the original image, um, this is what it looks like. So this is my ancestor. This was in Lincoln, in the, um, the county of Lincoln, in the township of Gainesboro. So this is Jacob on here. Um, <clears throat> this was his death date. And it tells me how old he was. In fact, I could actually work it back and find the exact day of his birth because they've got it right down to the actual how many days. He was a farmer and he was born in New Jersey. <clears throat> he died of old age. And uh, uh, sometimes you'll be lucky and they'll put the parents' names on there. I wasn't that lucky on this one. Um, so this one doesn't have parents' names on it. But uh, the other thing I usually do when I open something up, I always, I usually look at the whole document and actually this one here, the one right beside it, Christian Sunday, his sister was my three times great grandmother and the original name was Sontag. And for anybody that's familiar with Gainsborough, um, Bismarck um, used to be called Sontag Corners and, and it was named after Christian Sunday. So the next website I want to show you, this is the Ontario Ancestors website. This is the Niagara one. This is our website that Steve maintains. This is just the homepage over here. <clears throat> okay, so I went to... Um, I'm missing, sorry about that, I'm missing the link here. I went to the master index. <clears throat> and this is what it looks like when you get in there. Still needs to load a little bit. So I'm just gonna type in, in the surname, I'm gonna type in the name correct. And I'm gonna type in David. I have an ancestor, David Kirk, who was born in Germany. I'm gonna hit the enter key. And it gives me <clears throat> this page here. So there's a bunch of David Kirks on here. I just wanna show you what you can get out of this master index. I'm not gonna go through all of this. This one here, <clears throat> the McGill County Atlas Lincoln. If I go to view details, We see something like this. And if I just wait for something to load up here. Um, so it, it says David, um, given name is David. This is the surname, correct? And if I go for, for more information, <clears throat> it pulls up the full record for David Crick. He lived in um, Gainesboro. Um, he tells me the concession and lots. 
I can even locate these on the map. So I could actually go and locate the actual map of um, David Crick's property. Let's just go back to this one here. And there's one other one that I wanna to show to you. Um, I know that he's buried in Elko Cemetery. And if I go to view details on this, Just going to load up here and it's telling me to visit the society marketplace. So what that enables me to do, um, I know he's buried in Elko United Church Cemetery. Um, if I go to the society marketplace, I can purchase the cemetery records for Elko United Church. So that's part of the, that's the master. There's a lot more stuff in the master index. I'm just touching on some of the things that you might find in there. Also on our website, if you go under educational se sessions and go to media and learning videos, um, and I actually created these myself, I am planning to make some more videos. I just haven't had time to do them but I do have some learning videos on here. Um, they're open for anybody to look at. You don't have to be a members only to do that. So take a look at some of these. Um, the uh, one on finding the land records. Land records is a little bit of a challenge if you're an, uh, um, just starting into genealogy. I'm not sure I would recommend you look for land records right away. Um, they are pretty challenging to look at, um, tough to navigate <clears throat> some of the websites. Um, finding the Upper Canada Land Petition is not too bad. Lots of great information in there. And maps of Niagara, it just helps you locate maybe where your ancestors might have lived. And if I go into the members only, and you do have to be logged in, and you have to be a member to be able to get to this part of the website. The stuff that I showed you prior to this, it's available to anybody, but to get to the members only, you do have to be a member. So um, there's a bunch of digitized resources that we have on here, and I'm just going to go to the next one. These are some of the resources that we have in the Niagara collection. If I click on genealogies, um, I'm not going to go through all of these. If I click on genealogies, we've got the um, a bunch of collections that people have given to us and we've scanned them in and put them in for you to look at. Some of the families that we have on our members only um, are listed here. Um, again, you do have to be a member to have access to um, this part of our website. <clears throat> and I think the last thing that I want to go over with you, um, oh, there was one other thing. If I go to educational sessions and I go to media, we have a YouTube channel as well. And you can see we've got the, the, past, the past recordings on here, um, past news, newsletters, and we have a YouTube channel that you can access as well. And we also have a presence on Facebook. And I have created a handout and I've got links to some of the websites that um, I'll have Steve send them out to you tomorrow. I just wanna see if I need to modify it tonight. So this is our Facebook page. So we do have a presence on Facebook. Uh, sometimes people will ask questions about their ancestors. Anybody researching this family? Um, and that's a great, um, like here's one in here, Bill Young is asking a question. Um, and if anybody has help with what, or wants to help Bill with that, they can reply to that. So it's, it is a good way to, um, to do a little bit of research on your family. So having said, those are just some of the, and these are just some of the basic things. Um, another really common website, but it's a cost money is Ancestry. Um, I'm not, I didn't, I wasn't going to show that to you because it does cost money, but Ancestry is another really common website. They have a lot of um, records there. 
find my past is um, a lot of British stuff. They're starting to get a little bit more American stuff now and some Canadian stuff, but find my past is another website that um, you have to pay for. Uh, the big four are find my past, um, family search, my heritage and ancestry. And those are the ones that I tend to use a lot. Uh, I do have um, subscriptions to find my past and ancestry. So something else that we offer, every, every week, the OGS out of Toronto main office sends out a weekly OGS newsletter. Um, I look so, it comes out every Saturday. I look so forward to that. I look at it and check the webinars that are gonna happen for the week. I check the blogs. Um, in fact, this week, um, for any of you that might, might be inter interested, um, I read a blog of Gail Dever and I found out that uh, newspapers in Virginia, uh, the state of Virginia are now being digitized. Um, I don't have any ancestors in Virginia, but I don't think I do. It didn't really help me, but those are the kinds of things that you might get off of a blog. It, it's great information. So every week, the um, Ontario um, OGS puts out a newsletter. Um, every month, Niagara puts out a newsletter and both of those um, are free. You do have to sign up for them. So if you want uh, if you want to hear from us on a regular basis, um, sign up for the newsletter. It keeps you in the loop as to what's happening. Something else that um, I do a lot of, um, and especially lately that, that we can't get out and do much, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of there's a, a whole lot of free webinars out there. Um, Legacy has free webinars, and that will be on the handout when I when I have Steve send that to you. Um, the um, Toronto OGS, the big, not Toronto OGS, sorry, the main office OGS um, has a webinar the first Thursday of every month, and it's you don't have to be a member to watch it. You do have to be a member <clears throat> to watch it later. Um, so once it's um, been um, played once. Um, after that, it gets uh, posted, and you do have to be a member to see it later. Um, the Niagara branch does the same thing. Every third Friday, we do a webinar, and it's same thing. It's free. It doesn't cost anything to watch it on the Friday night, but you must be a member to view it later. Family history. Um, they have beginning, if you're a beginner, they have webinars for beginners. And I find their webinars are usually pretty well done. Um, I really do enjoy um, watching them. They're, they're pretty professional. Um, and they, I've got a lot of information out of the family history webinars. Um, just a couple of other places that I tend to go to, it's not so much to do with Niagara, the Allen County Public Library, um, they do a great job, very professional, um, and there's another place out of New Jersey where I watch webinars, but those aren't the only places, there's webinars everywhere. Um, so I think I have kind of said what I wanted to say, I just wanted to give you a bit of an introduction. Um, on online with us tonight, we have um, Sherry Bell. I don't know if Joanne's on yet. Steve is on, Joe is on, and Bill Young is on. Um, so I just I, I ask you to put some stuff in the in the chat. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna stop sharing my screen right now. So I want to go back to the regular screen. So um, I'm just gonna take a quick look at the chat here. I um, just want to see what, haven't been monitoring it at all. So, okay, we've got Alliston. All right, so Hopkins, Swayze's. Yeah, there's Swayze's in my husband's family. They married into the Johnsons. Yep, so Toronto, Angus, Laura Brown. Yeah, okay, so yeah, very good. Awesome. Oh, New York State, um, early settlers in Lewiston. And Queenston, yeah, okay, just across the river there. For those of you that aren't local, Lewiston and Queenston are just across the river. Lois, how do you access the library edition you were referring to? Okay, so what I will do, I, I'm gonna send out um, a handout tomorrow and it will, um, That's for, uh, that would be for my heritage. So I'll send out the handout tomorrow and you should have got a code from the OGS. You have to put um, a code in. And uh, I'll send you the link and then when you get your, 
you take your code from the OGS and then you um, go into the library edition. So hopefully that answers that question. Iowa, yeah, I'm doing research in Iowa. Actually, I, my great great grandparents lived in Clinton County, Iowa. That's awesome. Yeah, okay, Karen. Okay, so I think we have a number of people on here. So Karen, if you want to unmute yourself um, and ask the question, that would be great. And if anybody wants to talk, I mean, that, that's, I mean, I'm trying to encourage talking. I think because we have a few people on here, maybe we can use the raise hand um, reaction. So if you go to the bottom of your screen, it'll say reactions. If you click on reactions, um, right above the word reactions, it says raise hand. Okay, so if you want to raise your hand and then um, if you just want to talk, that's fine. I'm just trying to avoid everybody talking at once, but uh, we can maybe do it that way. So Karen had the question about Niagara settlers. So Karen? Hi, can you hear me? I can. Um, so I, uh, I um looked at the Niagara settlers well let me back up and say I I live in Ottawa so and and so I do most all of my research um virtually online and I looked at the settlers today the Niagara settlers today and I was really quite impressed about the number of new entries they have on that I've never actually bought paid the $12.95 to actually receive a, um, a tree. Can you, can you, does anyone know um, if it's worth it, if you will get actual um, sourced uh, information? Are you, you're talking about the Niagara, the Niagara Settlers website, the one that's done yeah. by, um, yeah, okay. Um, I don't know. I've never, I've never bought anything myself. I don't know if anybody else has. Yes, I have. It's Bill speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, I've purchased a couple on the Ostrander side of my family. And uh, I would say it's definitely a very good starting point. It's the Mutri site that you're talking about, right? Robert, M-U-T-R-I-E? Yes. Yes, and um, I think for the $12, it's a great place to start. If you've already been researching your family for, you know, five, 10 years, you might not think it's worth the $12.95. Uh, every time I've ordered it, it's been very promptly delivered within, uh, two days to the your inbox so it's well worth it uh, my comment would be i'd try one of them the one that you want the most or know the least about and make your decision after that what family are, we, are you researching karen um i have many okay i, I think the um I think the most challenging research families that I'm working on at the moment are Vanderbergs, Wilsons, and Atwells. So um, I have two, the, the both sides of my family are in Niagara. Uh, and the, the families I just mentioned to you are probably in Thorold Township, uh, as the Wayne Fleet, the Crowland area, Beaver Dams, Allenburg. Okay. And what I'm finding most challenging in all in all of those instances is the grandmother line. The female, I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know because the you know uh, the male lines are Hagers, Wares, Meisners. Um, which are far easier than the females. That's always the case because um, the women marry and then they typically, I mean, they don't typically own 
own land. They have rights to the land, but they don't own the land. So there's no, no means on their records. And yeah. Um, something else that I should mention, we do also have um, a research team. So if you wanted us to do some research, um, we'd be more than willing to do it. That's, a, that's another option. We don't charge, um, we, we do like to get donations, but we don't charge a specific fee for any kind of research. So that could be another avenue that um, you might pursue. So what is a reasonable research request? <laughs> they really vary. We get some really, some really deep ones. And sometimes they'll just say, I want a marriage record for so-and-so that in the township of Thoreau or something. Um, mm -hmm. it, can be, um, it can be something very specific. Um, sometimes we'll just say, I want to know about my family. And like that. Those are the hardest ones to do because we don't, well, we don't know what anybody has. We don't know what they're looking for. So um, if, you, if you are going to do it, like give us some kind of uh, a direction, I guess. That's what I would suggest, yeah. Thank you. And Lois, is there a button on the Niagara Peninsula Branch website where there's a drop down screen where they can fill out that request? I don't know, is Steve still there? Because he could probably answer that better than I can. I am still here. You think I would know that in a millisecond? Or should we direct them to the Ontario Ancestors? I should know it too, and I don't. Where there's yeah, the big I, red button. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Is we're going to direct uh, direct everybody to the research request there. So I'll get a button put onto our website that will push everybody to that form. Okay, so for now, um, you can go on to the Ontario Genealogy website, and there is a a research button on there that you can look onto if you if you are interested in doing that. Can I just say something, Lois? Sorry. Go ahead. Um, the lady that was just um, speaking, the Vandenbergs. I know. I can tell you that I know that the Vandenbergs were loyalists, and in fact, they live. Um, a, a, one of the families lives down the street from my aunt. So. Um, the other thing I was wanted to say, I noticed that um, uh, Kathy from Alston mentions Sopers. Um, were you looking for John Soper? I know he's a loyalist as well. Um, the other one, that, the Browns, um, Wesley Brown in... Um, in Gainesboro, I'm not sure if that's the family that you're looking for. And the Bowmans, uh, Bowmans were also loyalist. Um, George Adam Bowman, I don't know if that's one that you're looking for as well. Okay. I see Lori has her hand raised. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, this is my first meeting with you. Um, uh, and I'm delighted to ask a few questions. Um, oh, Go ahead. So I'm starting to research uh, my Phillips family. And so I have uh, the uh, Joseph Phillips, who went to, I'm sorry, I'm reading here, Gainsborough. He's listed in the 1861 census there um, with his family on lot, uh, I've done some land records research and found him lot 15 concession two. He's also listed as that in the 1885 directory of St. Catharines. Um, so he, one of his sons, no, one of his daughters married a Hiram Hannum they were located concession one lot 14. So that's always nice to find sort of, you know, two families that married very living very close together. Now, my question is, does anybody know the name of the Presbyterian church that would be close to that location? 
at the time because I know they were Presbyterian and I'd like to look at some church records. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> I found a reference to one being built in a 1799 on concession six lot 13. So I just, I don't know where to look for the actual name of that Presbyterian church. What were the lot numbers again, Lori? Um, the, the lot number of the church itself? Oh, no, sorry, of, of your of your family. I was oh, okay. So the Hannams, uh, Hiram Hannam, H-A-N-H-A-M, <laughs> was on concession one, lot 14. And then Joseph Phillips was um, lot 15, concession two. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know that off the top of my head. That's fine. But uh, let me see what I can find, and I can uh, send you an email if I can find anything. Oh, that's that. wonderful. Who and am I speaking to? Who's, oh, who's speaking? Lois. Is that you, Lois? Sorry. Lois, yes, this is Lois. Okay. Talking. Thank you very much, Lois. I know that he was buried in Brown Cemetery, uh, Font Hill Brown Cemetery. Um, so there, I don't have a lot of information about this family. I'm still trying to piece it all together, but I just thought I'd start with that. So thank you. Okay. And you're not, you're not local. I'm not, I'm no, just. No, no, I'm near Ottawa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's where right. you can get, uh, Lori's email address from our membership list so you can contact her. Okay. I was just going to ask you that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, um, our Baker has a hand up. Go ahead. Okay, I, we're not hearing you. Okay, hello you, now, right now. Are you able to hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Great. Hi, it's Ron Thacker speaking, and I'm in Markham. And uh, I've been uh, researching the uh, chase line of my family for a couple of decades. And uh, I have um, ongoing challenges specifically with um, researching uh, before 1818 for Lancelot Chase and um, after 1834 for Lancelot Chase, um, he just seemed, he and his wife, uh, Lancelot and his wife, um, Anne Fraley, uh, lived in Grimsby in 1833. And um, I just can't find any documentation about them after that date uh, on their children's um, marriage records. Uh, in the later 1830s uh, and 1840s, uh, when it, uh, w where there's a, a place for parents to be noted, it just says unknown or it's left blank. Um, so it, again, that's a bit of a mystery for me. Um, I know that they were, uh, uh, Lancelot Chase was, uh, his first marriage was to Catherine Henry, Dominic Henry, the uh, Niagara on the Lake uh, lighthouse keeper, his daughter, uh, married uh, Lancelot Chase in 1816, uh, I believe, um, at Saint, and they're in the Saint Mark's Registry, Robert Addison's Registry. Um, but I, I have no idea where he came from, um, so I have a, a couple of questions. Uh, firstly. The fact that Lancelot Chase and Catherine Henry were married by Robert Addison and they show up in his uh, master register, does this mean that they were married at the church or could they have been married at one of the other locations that Robert Addison traveled to? And if that is the case, is there any way of looking, of, of determining where they were married by looking at that? registry. And my second question is uh, about um, whether anyone has any thoughts on 
why both Anne Fraley and um, Lancelot Chase, uh, Anne Fraley being his second wife, uh, just kind of dropped off the map after uh, the uh, early 1830s in Grimsby. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, I th some of the problem here might be the, the lack of, for, the, for your second question, some of the problem here might be the lack of records. We don't really have a census until 1850. There right. is an 1828 um, census. I don't believe there's an 1842 in Niagara. I think there's an 1828 census. So I guess there's not a lot of places that records would exist, maybe some church records, but I guess my question might be, did they own land? And if so, you might be able to find something on the land records. I don't know if you find anything about the wife, yes. but yes. I'm just Actually, but, another place. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the land records are, uh, I've used uh, on land extensively and uh, to search the yeah, land records. Okay. And I've, uh, <laughs> I've found so many other members of the family, but not them. Uh, he was a carpenter. And um, I don't know if that increases or decreases the likelihood that, uh, you know, that he would own land, but uh, it, it doesn't appear that he did because his children all subsequently owned land and were farmers, but nothing for Lancelot Chase. And of course, with the Fraley name, uh, it's spelled so many different ways. It's very difficult to determine what her um, her ancestors and her, you know, who, who they are. Um, on their marriage license, it's her name is spelled F R O E L I C H. Um, but on other documentation related to the birth of their children in Grimsby, it's spelled F-R-A-L-I-C-K or F-R-A-L-I-K. And there's lots of other variations as well. Yeah, so I would suggest maybe some church records. Um, I think, Bill, do you have any thoughts on, uh, on that? I was, I was going to ask if you have uh, pursued the idea that they might have gone to the United States somewhere. As uh, one. And I, uh, you know, was that was the possibility, did they go back to Europe? And three, uh, uh, I know the newspapers are very scarce at that time, but uh, have you tried to see if there is any newspaper article about them dying or something like that i honestly i didn't think that there would be any newspapers from that area available going back to the 1830s but you're saying that's worth pursuing it i would say it's worth something worth checking out again they're not going to be dailies and they may not be local as local but it's surprising when you do find a newspaper how all those little social one-liners tend to get into them. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, since you've met so many other brick walls, it's, it's worth, worth a try. try for a while. Yeah. There are a few local newspapers that go into the 1830s. I know I found, I just stumbled on this. I found somebody that, one of my, not ancestor, but part of the family in Quebec that died. It was posted in the St. Catharines newspaper. I, I don't know why it would have been, but it was a, he died in 1835, I believe. So I do know that there's there's a few a few newspapers floating around here that are that old. Lois, it's Steve. Yeah. So one uh, for some reason I don't have a hand to put up, so I'll just kind of jump in, but. The, the other thought that he might want to reach out to is at St. Mark's uh, Church in Niagara-on-the-Lake because the Addison Collection, uh, the Addison Library uh, is at St. Mark's. And um, if there's any hint of, you know, those marriage records, they may be there. And actually, I've, I, actually, I've been there and I've seen them. Okay. But... Um... When I when I was there and saw them, 
I was so elated to find the information. <laughs> I, I just assumed that they were married in that church. But some of the reading that I've done over the last few years suggests that entries in that master registry don't necessarily indicate that they were married in that church. But right. I'm not sure if that's the case or if that's just what some people think. Right, right. Do you have any sense? Um, I'd almost, there is there is an older gentleman that is the rector at St. Mark's. Uh, you probably have met him, uh, Donald Coombe. And um, I would bounce that question off of him. He would okay. have a sense of that. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Thank you very much for your help. Hey, no problem. Okay. Cass, your hand is up. Yep, there we go. Yep, I'm on. Thank you very much. I'm. I live south of Ottawa, but I had grown up in Fort Erie. Um, my question is: I am trying to find my father's divorce records from his first wife, approximately 1937 to 1941. Um. When I phoned the Welland Courthouse, because I assumed that the records for the divorce would have been at the Welland Courthouse, um, I didn't get any help uh, to be able to find the year of the divorce and a file number for the Archives of Ontario to uh, uh, retrieve the records so I could look at it. Um, the Toronto and Hamilton are also involved, but I was at the archives and I think it's Surge that does a, a lot of the research there and does talks. And he said I needed to get back to the Welland Courthouse and talk, uh, try and get past the receptionist so I could talk to somebody and see if they can find out what the year and file number is. is how would I handle, I would assume that it would be the well, uh, the well in courthouse, the records would be at, not at the Lincoln one. How would I get past it? Would it be better to write a letter to the courthouse and see if somebody would listen to me or does anybody have any suggestions? Um. I know people have had trouble with the courthouses just trying to get information. Um, how do you, I don't know, has anybody actually got around to get anything out of the courthouse? I don't know. Can Maybe. I ask, do you know that it's at the courthouse and it's not at the Archives of Ontario? Because I thought divorce records up until 1960 were at the Archives of Ontario. Unfortunately, there was uh, only on microfilm was the Toronto ones, they retrieved the uh, books for Hamilton, but they had nothing for Fort Erie. Mm. And uh, so this is when he said that I have to get back to the, the courthouse in Welland to see if I can get uh, the year and file number. Well, I can tell you that I haven't had much success with the courthouse in Welland because I was looking for um, uh, coroner records and uh, I didn't I went there personally and they were absolutely no help at all the archives of Ontario told me they were there at, at the courthouse in Welland but the people at the courthouse in Welland said they had no idea so they weren't very helpful at all yeah they actually even said I had a phone here in Ottawa area and uh, of course, the fellow said, no, you're in the wrong year. It's got to be at the courthouse or at the archives. So, uh, uh, Cass, it's Bill Young speaking. I was wondering, uh, you're specifically wanting the year and file number so you can get the whole, the whole file from the Archives of Ontario, correct? Yes. Okay, because if it was just a, a divorce date, um, I've had success in finding uh, a divorce date and they used to be published in the Toronto Star newspaper um, so that everybody would know that 
Sam was legally divorced from Sally when he tried to get married the next time. Um, so I guess I'm not going to help you then by trying to see if it's in the Toronto Star newspaper because you're looking for those specific things of the file and the year number. Well, at least, at least if it was in the Toronto Star, and as I say, they did, they did get married in Toronto. Um, I mean, at least that would give me a start for a divorce state. Yes, the, uh, the reason I, it's just my past experience. I, um, I followed, uh, I found a person that I was looking for having a divorce around 1948 to 50. And it said the name of who he was, the, the, the name of the, the man and who he was divorced from. And I'm not sure if there was a location given. It wasn't, it wasn't just for the city of Toronto divorces. It was more for the whole province. It was a way of making a public notification that they were divorced. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Might be a good way of getting around the courthouse. Okay. Thank you. Cass, it's Steve as well. Yes. Um, one of the things that the archives does have, and I know Serge, and I'm surprised he didn't give it to you, they have uh, PDF resource documents on their website. If you go to the Archives of Ontario, I was just trying to find it, but uh, their website's much to be discussed, but you'll find a PDF document on divorce. And yes, I was there this this afternoon. Yeah, and it will give you a timeline because divorce used to be a very federal thing mm -hmm. up to a certain time period. Um, the only other thing I would suggest to you that they would take it serious at that point. Um, if you're really after it and it'll cost you five bucks, but if you file a freedom of information to the courthouse, they legally cannot ignore that at that point. They, have, so, to this they have to deal with the information. Um, to, uh, to this courthouse in Welland then? Yep, I would file it right against the courthouse, a freedom of information on you know the information on the divorce and they've got to legally deal with it they can't just ignore you okay. at that point okay thank you very much you that's another welcome. good thing. thank you very much that'll get you past the receptionist pretty quick <laughs> <laughs> thank you you're welcome okay. and where do i get this um freedom of information would it be through the welland courthouse no. If you uh, if you just go on your computer and you just Google Freedom Ontario Freedom of Information, it'll take you right to the web page. You can download it. You can you can work through the process. Okay, thank you. I much appreciate it. All right. How long is how long has uh, the people been deceased? Um, my dad's been gone since seventy seven. 20 years is the magic number usually. Okay. If it's longer than 20 years, that's not going to be one of the uh, holdbacks. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Karen. Okay. Two very different questions. Um, again, I... I too don't live in, in the Niagara area any longer. And I have found um, there, there is a foundation in St. Catharines called the May Home Foundation, which describes itself as a repository of local family histories. And I know, I, I, my question is, is there anyone local that's been there and would explain to me what they've got? And is it worth like emailing them with very specific family um, names in mind to see what, if they've got kind of secondary resources. I, this is Lois, I have been there. Yeah. Um, and I, 
I went there when I was sort of starting out my research and I really did find it really good. Now, in the past two or three years, there's been an awful lot of stuff digitized. I'm going to be honest. I don't know if they have something now that hasn't been digitized. Um, I did, and they were very helpful. Like I did find the organization to be very, very, very good. Okay, thank you. I don't um, know, if anybody, has anybody else been there? Can I ask what, what area are you looking for? Cause they really concentrate on like the St. Catharines, Lincoln area. I mean, they do have things from other areas of Niagara but they're, a lot of their records are for like Lincoln and uh, uh, that area. Is that the area you're searching? Yes, it's, it's Thorold Township. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're very good and very helpful and very knowledgeable and they have a lot, a lot. Okay. It, it's, so, certainly, it's certainly worth sending them an email. Okay, with names, with particular family names and saying, do you have? Yeah. Okay, so the second thing I've been struggling with is the brown burying ground. So can someone can 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 someone when the when the phrase burying ground is used I I understand it typically to be Quaker but I'm but I haven't been able to confirm and I think the the brown burying ground is in the in the area of Font Hill does anyone know if indeed it is a Quaker cemetery. Karen, it's Steve. It is the Font Hill Cemetery, Municipal Cemetery. That The original name was the Browns burial ground, but it is actually the Font Hill Municipal Cemetery. So it is not particularly Quaker? No. Thank you, there Steve. Be, there may be Quakers in it, but it's yeah. not particularly Quakers, no. Okay. Thank you. And in concern to the first question uh, about um, Thorold Township, if you email May Home, which uh, we encourage you to do so, uh, also CC uh, ourselves in it because we have a working relationship with the Thorold Museum. Mm -hmm. And we have quite a, well, we have almost immediate access to all their holdings and resources that we may be able to pull if Mayhome doesn't have anything. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, our Baker. You have to unmute. Okay. I, I just I was just commenting that uh, I had been to the Mayhome Foundation as well a number of years ago, and um, they were extremely helpful. And uh, you know, every time I had a question, and even after I returned home over the years, uh, I'd call them, and uh, they spent countless hours helping me out. So uh, yeah, they're, they're a very good organization. Okay, thank you. I'm just taking a quick look through the chat here. Um, I see there's some Robins connections. I'm also connected to the Robins. Um, um, actually, that uh, Jacob Vaughn I showed you, his mother-in-law was a Robin. So um, I guess there's lots of Robins connections here. Um, Karen, your hand is still up. Is that, are you? Yeah, no, I did have one more question. Oh, oh go ahead. Um, <laughs> is anyone, um, I haven't been able, I've, I've found a reference to something called the, the Annals of Niagara. The Annals Is of- Is anyone familiar with that and where the, I can gain access? The Annals of the 40? There's, there's also the an Annals of Niagara. Oh, okay, all right. I yeah. know they have, have a copy at the Niagara Falls Library. Um, I'm, it's Bill Young talking. I'm wondering if the Annals of Niagara is uh, one of the pu publications that came out of the Niagara on the Lake um, Historical Society and Museum. They used to publish things regularly. And 
I think that's maybe where they, um, they, they might be attached to. That would be my comment. Do you have a specific uh, one that you're looking for? No, it's more, I've seen reference, like I've seen it's as a source. So you think it might be the Niagara on the Lake historical or the library? Uh, it's the Niagara on the Lake. I think it's called Niagara um, His Historical Society and Museum. Thank it's you. In, it's in Niagara on the Lake. That's perfect. Okay. okay. Arthur, Arthur, your hand is up. I don't know if you intended to talk. Sorry, I'm not sure why it keeps showing that I'm putting my hand up. But, okay, uh, all right. We'll, 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 we'll move on. Cass? Cass, you're muted. There, can you hear me now? Yep, yep. Just another quick question. Where in I noticed for to do research for Fort Erie, there's a lot to work on through the library in Fort Erie. Um, I know there's on Garrison Road, there's a museum in Fort Erie. Uh, is there a good place to do some research for Fort Erie? Mm -hmm. I think the library is is a good place. I don't know what's at the museum. I've gone on the website. It didn't look like they had a lot. I, it's my intent to get out there one of these days and check the museum out. I haven't been there. Um, we probably have, like, I don't know what you're looking for specifically, but we have a lot of, I don't know if we have a lot of, we do have um, cemetery records in Fort Erie. I don't know if we have church records. We have a number of records um out of Fort Erie in our in our possession so that might be a place to look at as well okay thank you very much okay oh, so I guess I'm just gonna um I just want to finish off with a, a few things here um I guess I kind of want to know did you find this beneficial um, if you find a way we could do something like do it better let us know this is the first time we've done this um, and we did it just because we want to get, uh, we want to get the new members involved, we want to get to know them. So it, it is hard to do this virtually. I mean, it was so much easier face to face, but we're not be, going to be doing that for a while. And a lot of you don't live here anyway, so it would probably never be face to face. So I guess we're kind of asking, um, what do you, I don't want to say, I don't want to say what you, what do you want from us, but would you like us to do more of these? Um, is there a way we could do it better? Um, do you have any specific requests for webinars? We're trying to keep our web webinars Niagara oriented. Um, would you like just some drop-in sessions? Like, and this was just done for more for new members, but um, we would look at maybe doing drop-in sessions for everybody in the Niagara group, um, maybe like twice and tw two or three times in a, not, um, maybe every other month or something. Um, I guess I'm just kind of looking at what you want from us. Um, if you want to type it in the chat or put your hand up and make a comment, that would be fine. Write it out. <laughs> Karen, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I found, I'd like, I think this is a great initiative um, for someone that, um, you know, isn't in the region at all. And um, and like, I'm not a new, like I'm not new at it. I've been working at it for about eight years now, but doing it at a distance, it just, it's great to be able to tap into people who are, are there and are um, really experienced at it. So I would encourage you to do it every, you know, three times a year or something and just let people kind of ask people questions. Yeah, okay, good, good. Thanks for the feedback. Bill? Yes, uh, I just put a, a link to the Fort Erie 
Historical Museum, which is located in Ridgeville, uh, Ridgeway, sorry, in downtown Ridgeway. And they have a phone number with this, um, the link that I have put in the chat to Cass, but uh, they are also well worth sending an email. And again, try to get rather specific with what you want so that they know what you're looking for rather than a big general sweeping statement that might help them. And uh, as a person with the research team, Lois, I think this is uh, time well spent. I, I hope that Cass and uh, Thaker and a few others who've put in their questions, Karen, uh, as well, that they've got something out of it. And again, it's just another set of ears to hear the question and some experiences that we can share that might help them along that way. Anybody else have any comments or anything to say? Okay, then I think we will call it a, an evening. And it's been really good talking to everybody. If you need to, um, actually, my I, I should just tell you what my email is. I'll put it in the um, put it in the chat. Um, my email in if you need to. Um, it's lois.johnson at ogs.on.ca. If you want to send me an email about anything, feel free to do it. That would be great. <laughs>